Why do I say every American should watch this video? It is about a very dire and very swift onset of complete destruction that is soon to befall the United States of America. In this video, I will share with you what Holy Spirit has shown me and countless others, that America is the great whore that rides the beast of Revelation 17 and 18. I will tie in the warnings of multiple prophets from Old and New Testament that also warned of this future Babylon's fall. The details contained in the Word of God are too accurate to ignore. You'll also see a sample of modern day dreams and visions that contain God's warnings to America through His servants, His believers living here in the States. So whether you're a believer or not, please hear out this message as it contains many details about what is to come, how it is to come, and what we, as those who live here, should do about it. And let me tell you what the Lord showed me last night. After North Korea released this missile against the U.S. They had the words across the screen, you know, on CNN, that we were at war with North Korea. The President of the United States had declared war against North Korea. And I'm trying to reconcile what's going on. Are we under attack? Right then, a third flash to the Northwest. So it went counterclockwise, just one after the other after the other. Then it's a fourth flash, which was to the West, sort of Southwest. I just knew we were under attack. These were major cities. America is Mystery Babylon, the evidence. In the very introduction of who Babylon is and her relationship to the beast in Revelation 17, one of the very first descriptors of her is how she affects the world. And it says, those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. In Jeremiah, intoxicating all the earth, the nations have drunk her wine, therefore the nations are going mad. And in Rev 18, all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. And Isaiah gives more details about sorcery and wickedness. Keep on then with your magic spells and your many sorceries. And they, the plagues of destruction, will come upon you in a single day, in spite of your many sorceries and potent spells. Well, when I think of sorcery and America, I think of the music industry. You don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. She swears to her god, Lucifer, in her industry, she isn't alone. Which isn't too surprising, considering the media and all the entertainment world belongs to the Beast. There was a man by the name of John Todd who came out in the 70s to speak out on his experience, his insider experience of exactly what kind of sorcery the music industry is involved in. And although he refers to rock, but now, of course, we have many other genres of music, and it's pretty much in all of them that are popular. Here's what he has to say. I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions which Zodiac Productions, its name's been changed since then, I'm not even sure what they call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records, owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. But the name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan, Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it on back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It's one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got was a man named David Crosby. I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the coven conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, 
please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He says the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. When him and Crosby, Still Nash and Young produced the record Two Way Street, they ordered the Principality of Medes to order demons of rebellion to go into the record, and everybody that heard it would be rebellious against law and order and government. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand-chosen witches and witch wizards and a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. Make me our Aphrodite. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Music is not just a song. It is supernatural music that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. Oh yes, uh, and, and, and music is a whole another area uh, that uh, employs these techniques. Po uh, popular music, uh, all, all popular culture, it's not just entertainment. It, it's, entertainment is not value free. It, it has ideological content. It presents a world view that influences the people who are watching or listening. So uh, we, we've kind of, we've got this disconnect thinking that entertainment is harmless when it's the most important uh, a delivery system of propaganda because it influences people without their conscious awareness and that's the ultimate in, in controlling people in society is to do it without them being aware of it. We are in a spiritual war for our souls, and part of that is a psychological war for our minds. Hey family, it's Miss Dana Ashley. I hope you like the introduction. This has been a long time coming. This is something that the Lord has put upon me from day one. Not long after I first got this, I opened it up, and my eyes went down, and it said Babylon. And I grabbed a chunk. And I looked down again, it said Babylon twice. It happened four times total in a row. And I got Holy Spirit chilled all over me. Because he's chosen me to bring you this message. I want you to understand that nothing that I put onto my videos is willy-nilly. I don't just come up with a theory and go, oh, that sounds good, and then pop it on a video. There's a lot of thought and care and concern in the things that I present. The things that I've been shown, I think that I've been shown because I don't have preconceived notions about what this means. I didn't go to church to learn what this means. I was shown personally and supernaturally that God is real and that Jesus walked the earth and that he died for our sins. I didn't want to believe that, but it's true. So as a person who has no background, I've come in a fresh slate 
I didn't go in reading chapter 17 and 18 of Revelation saying Babylon is Rome. You know, I just read it and Holy Spirit showed me. So before you make comments about your theories on what anything is, just be sure that you've backed it up with a word and you're not just reiterating what someone else has said. See, there's a bit of a pandemic of that going on in our nation. Have you noticed that in school, if you went to school here, that we weren't told how to think for ourselves. We were taught what they said was true and we were tested on how well we could regurgitate that truth. So that created this mass of people who don't know how to think for themselves. They go to CNN to say, what's happening in the world? Tell me what, what to think about it. And they go to their pastors and say, what does this mean? What do I need to do about it? I would like to argue that that's not by accident. So on this channel, you're never going to hear a theory that is contradicted somewhere else within the same book. I'm not going to pull three theories out like the Whore of Babylon wears red and purple and she sits on seven hills and she, and she has the blood of the saints on her hands and say, oh, that's Rome. And then when it says something that contradicts that, I just keep that theory because, hey, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> so, remember what was said in Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. I feel blessed that the Lord has shared so much with me. I have been ordered to share it with you. I was told specifically that this is not mine. I'm new in my walk. Be easy on me. Maybe ask yourself, what were you doing a year into your walk? And then take it from that point. I'm not perfect, never claim to be. Not a preacher, not a prophet. I have a pretty decent gift of discernment and a lot of passion for bringing people to him because I was lost for so long and I want to help other people to understand that this is true. When it comes to discerning the truth, you shouldn't listen to CNN, you shouldn't even listen to your pastor, and you certainly shouldn't listen to me. Every single thing that you come across, you need to test. In fact, we're ordered to do so. In Thessalonians 5.20 it says, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what's good. Test what I say to your own connection to the Father. Okay? And another thing that he definitely pressed on me to tell you was that there are way too many people who are just listening to YouTube videos and they're not connecting with him. And that is not what, 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 what he wants. And my, my information can be very heavy. And so, you know, you should feed yourself with praise and worship and you should find someone who feeds you in that way but also don't let any of these YouTube videos take you away from your time with him because that's really all that's gonna matter here as things start to break down okay the beast and the whore so the really cool thing about Revelation 17 and 18 is that 17 sets up the relationship between the whore and and the beast that she rides, that's the beast system, that's the New World Order system. And Revelation 18 talks about her demise and just how badly she will be thrown down and burned. So before I get into this, I want to say really quickly, Dana's 101, here's what's going to happen with America in the end times, okay? This will make everything fall into context and help you to have a loose idea of what we're going into. This is a four hour, <laughs> I just gotta say, this is a four hour presentation that I'm trying to squeeze down into 25 minutes. There will be a part two, please don't miss it. Basically it goes like this. America is Babylon. She's the whore. She's the whore that rides the beast. She's been riding the beast a long time. In fact, I would argue we were set up by the beast in the first place. The beast is a new world order system. The New World Order system is a group of individuals who basically worship Lucifer, who are in control of the entire planet, pretty much. 
Um, there are people who are working for this system who may not worship Lucifer, of course, but there are definitely people in the higher echelons of the New World Order system that know exactly what they're doing. And remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, this is a spiritual war. We've been riding the beast a long time. In Revelation 17, 16, it says very clearly, the beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Pretty, pretty harsh. It's a pretty harsh prophecy. That's why the Lord has been pressing upon me so much to get it out to you because most people don't understand the true meaning of it. So the beast throws the whore under the bus. And this is one reason why I don't think it'll be Vatican or Rome because they are part of the beast system. They aren't going down. Okay, they're going to be here until the Lord himself casts them into the lake of fire. I do believe that the Pope will be the false prophet. doesn't matter who I think the Antichrist is. You probably already know it, but um, we may not even get a chance to see that because many of us will be nuked to smithereens. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, people like Trump are setting up a majority of people who call themselves believers, people who call themselves Christians, they think that he is walking with the Lord. They think that he's here to save America. What you have to realize is that we are living in the time of the great delusion. We are living in total and complete lies. Your history that you learn in school is lies. What the TV tells you on the news is lies. It's all lies. Trump was selected not elected, selected. And here's the thing. What is the goal of the New World Order? The goal of the New World Order is one world government. They want no religion except theirs, which is love everybody and everything's cool. No borders, which is no nations anymore, no presidents. They'll be talking about peace and security and equal human rights and loving each other. So think about it. What is Trump? What is Trump? People think Trump is, is a Christian nationalist. But I would argue that the man ain't walking like Jesus, okay? We're told pride comes before the fall. Have you seen a more prideful person? Um, you don't say I'm going to blow up a country to smithereens if you're really walking with him. You can't even be involved in politics at this level if you're doing what the Bible commands. You just can't because it's the beast system. So Trump was selected as the perfect person to create what? We know that they're going to persecute Christians. It says it all over. To create animosity towards Christians. To create animosity towards anyone who wants to have national boundaries. So when America falls on the watch of a Christian nationalist, and the world is like, oh no. People think we can never fall. With the budget that we have for the military, who would think that we could go down? Well, let me tell you, we can, and it's been in the works for a long time. But whenever we fall on the watch of a Christian nationalist, the rest of the world will do the opposite of what we stood for. It's part of the reason why the media makes everything look so crazy and messed up. They want people to think it's all crazy and messed up. Please, somebody help us. Let's just all get along. That's why they do it. Order out of chaos. That's the whole reason why they do it. But once America falls, the United Nations and other major world players, with the Pope at the front, they'll hop right into damage control. They will openly present their plan for a new global alliance. All of the puppets, I mean leaders, will sign right up. The United Nations for a 10 region world have already been openly in the plans for decades. And it says it right in scripture. It says the 10 horns you saw are 10 kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with a beast. That's a new world order plan to have a 10 nation, a 10 union world. It's right there in Revelation. How do you know that the Pope is going to be in the middle of it? All you have to do is look at the media. When Time Magazine named Pope Francis the Person of the Year for 2013, everybody was like, oh yes, it's wonderful, isn't he just wonderful? This is the same mainstream media that attacks Christianity every chance they get. 
true Christianity, following Jesus, reading this book. Yet they show immense respect and adoration and idolatry, really, to the Catholic hierarchy. Have you ever noticed why the Illuminati controlled uh, media? They glorify promiscuity. They promote uh, homosexuality, pornography, murder, and violence. Yet they mock Christians, almost always depicting us in a negative light. It will start to make sense when you begin to realize that the top executives for these media conglomerates have connections to Jesuit trained alumni and members or Catholic orders. They just are. They are part of the beast and the whore can't be around anymore. Our destruction will instigate their rise. So the beast hates the whore. In crude terms, what is a prostitute for? To be used for vile purposes and then thrown away. Well, we have certainly been used by the beast for many things for the Antichrist kingdom. We are in debt uh, to degrees that would, could never be recovered anyway. We have plundered much of the earth's resources. We've spread our filth through the entertainment industries um, all over the world. So we've done our job for the beast. Now, this country of ours that still manages to pretend that we stand for nationalism and Christianity, Many people here are not going to stand for this system, so we got to go. So just know that nothing happens in government that is on accident. Trump was selected, not elected, for a very specific purpose. To create more division against the Christian nationalists so that when America falls on the watch of a Christian nationalist like Trump, the whole world will reel in disbelief at the fall of such a powerful nation as ours, and they will want to do the opposite of what we were doing. Enter New World Order. So that's my general view of how this all goes down. But let's get in scripture to prove, let the word do the proven, once and for all, that America is Babylon. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. And I grabbed a broom and I was brushing up all these dollar bills like all this money was in a giant pile and I was sweeping it in a giant pile and this money was completely worthless every sea captain and all who travel by ship the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off when they see the smoke of her burning they will exclaim was there ever a city like this great city they will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out woe Woe, O oh great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour she has been brought to ruin. For those of you who love to say that Babylon is Rome, I have a couple of questions for you. How many deep sea ports does Rome have? Answer, none. Question, would the world's merchants mourn because a fallen Rome won't buy any more of their goods? No. Therefore, Babylon isn't Rome. A fallen Rome would not impact the merchants of the world in any way but America. If underdeveloped countries consumed as much as America did, four complete planet Earths would be required. The U.S. population makes up only 5% of the Earth, yet we consume one-fourth of the Earth's resources. Not only would merchants mourn if America collapsed, entire industries would evaporate. Further, the present global currency, the dollar, would be no more. Thus, creating the perfect opportunity for the New World Order beast to introduce its new monetary system, the RFID chip. Right off the bat, I would like to address the most common objection that I hear about America being Babylon. It comes from a fixation on how it is described as a city by Revelation. Uh, for example, in Revelation 18, they will stand far off in fear of her torment, saying, Whoa, whoa, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in a single hour your judgment has come. How do we answer this? Well, first let's read another one of the city verses and notice what the city has. Revelation 17, 18. And the woman you saw is the great city that has an empire over the kings of the earth. 
The US is easily the most powerful country to have ever existed. There's never been a country with such a massive global presence. And the big question is, how did these bases get there in the first place? But even now that the Cold War is over, there's not a place on Earth that's not still covered by US military influence. So over the past 70 years, the US has set up bases all over the world in response to threats, and then they just never left. These 800 bases around the world represent a massive system of military power that isn't often talked about. But when you understand about these 800 military bases, it makes the scripture referring to the seven hills on which the woman sits make a lot more sense. For the seven hills on which the woman sits are the seven continents of the entire earth. Other details point to Babylon as being more than a city because it refers to her having multiple cities within it. For example, in Jeremiah 50, 32, the proud one shall stumble and fall with no one to raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities and I will devour all that is around him. So there are cities within it. Also in Jeremiah 51, 43, her cities have become a horror, a land of drought and a desert a land in which no one dwells. So why then does Revelation call it a city? It seems to be using a common convention in both ancient and modern times to refer to a nation by its chief city. The media today often says Moscow when they're referring to Russia or Washington to the USA. Furthermore, and a really important point that proves that America is Babylon is the fact that in Jeremiah 50:12 it actually refers to Babylon as having a mother. In Jeremiah 50:12 it says, "Your mother will be greatly ashamed. She who gave you birth will be disgraced." Which is amazing because that would allude to our perceived mother nation of the United Kingdom. And now it's time for a quick real history moment. And lies your teacher told you. Did the world wars, revolutions, and big events of human history evolve naturally? Or were they calculated and pre-planned? If they were pre-planned, who planned them? And what are they planning for the future of humanity? The answer to this puzzling question can be found within the boundaries of three of the world's most powerful cities. Those three cities belong to no nation and pay no taxes. They are Washington's District of Columbia, which is not part of the city of Washington or of the United States, the inner city of London, which is not part of London or England, and Vatican City, which is not part of Rome or Italy. These cities called city-states have their own independent flag, their own separate laws, and their own separate identity. <laughs> so now that you've had your alternate history lesson, <laughs> You know, um, it's never fun to know that you've been lied to. The good thing is, if you believe in this book, you will already be prepared for that. I love the quote by Isaiah 9:16 that says, For the leaders of this people caused them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. It is the leaders that cause us to err. It is the leaders, even within the Christian movement are itself. So that is why we have Holy Spirit. That is why we can be guided one-on-one. -on -one. As it regards to the idols um, that I was showing you within Washington, D.C., certainly there are scriptures that talk about Babylon's idols will be destroyed. But I thought it was very interesting, and he shared this with me today, so I was really excited to share this part with you. There is a scripture in Jeremiah 50, verse 2. Babylon has been captured, Baal has been put to shame, Marduk has been shattered. Her images have been put to shame, her idols have been shattered. So those of you who don't know, there are, at, there are idols here in America. This is another indicator of us being the future Babylon. Check this out. I lived in Hollywood for a very long time. Uh, I lived right next to the Kodak Theater, which is where they have the Oscars. There is this bizarre... Hollywood and Highland, which is where they have the stars on the sidewalk and all that mess, there's this bizarre landmark with this crazy Egyptian-looking god. I always got a bad feeling about it. I didn't know what it was. But today, the Lord reminded me, when I was looking at the scripture about Marduk, check this out. There is this... Oh my gosh, I just thought of something. This is where they filmed American Idol. Wow. 
I just remember this. They built this entire structure to point at the Hollywood sign in the Hollywood Hills. Satan tells you exactly what he is doing. He is telling you that this is of Marduk. These are the images that represent the idols of Babylon today. Amazing. I, I lived in this area for a very long time. I think goodness I never got very caught up into it but people would come from all over the world to see this sign and to be a part of this idol worship that is rampant in our society in America and this is what God is showing us this is a part of it this is a part of what he is going to destroy and here are a few more of the idols right there in DC and the people who founded our country crown colonies are controlled by the empire of three city states at the center of each city-state is a towering, phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. city-state, the obelisk, known as the Washington Monument, was dedicated to Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. The secret of Brotherhood of Freemasons laid the Washington Obelisk's cornerstone in 1848 and contributed 22 Masonic memorial stones. 250 Masonic lodges financed the Washington Monument Obelisk, including the Knights Templar Masonic Order. At the heart of London city-state is a 187-ton, 69-foot-tall Egyptian obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle. It was transported from Egypt and erected on the banks of the River Thames. In Vatican City, another Egyptian obelisk towers high above St. Peter's Square. So does the whore that rides on the beast, America, Babylon, have idols? Certainly. We were a part of their system all along. But I wanted to point this out to you um, because it really ties in and shows you that we have been a part of this beast system. We have been riding the beast, but now, just like it says in Revelation 17, 16, the beast will turn on us and spit us out. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Next thing you know, the sky turns all black and red in this nuclear bomb overtook the whole city and just this nu two nuclear bombs just went off big old mushroom cloud over the whole city the lord was very gracious in showing me a parallel verse in jeremiah 51 34 king of babylon has devoured us he has thrown us into confusion and left us an empty jar like a serpent he has swallowed us and filled his stomach with our delicacies and then spewed us out much like the new world order system has used the whore to fulfill their purpose we have been the police of the world filling their pockets with money giving them blood sacrifices of all the people that we've murdered and all these wars that we have perpetrated the united states is going to make a move there was a decision made that the shadow government whoever it is is gonna release nuclear missiles in the United States. Kim Jong-un, he looks at me real sinister looking and he says, come here. We go to a deck and from what I can see was a bunch of missiles. But in my dream, I was thinking, oh, these are weak missiles. This ain't enough to do nothing. And he, he says, come here. And then we go crawl underneath the deck to what we can't see. And we can see it. And, and there's a bunch of powerful nuclear weapons, enough to wipe out the United States. I believe that Russia and Iran and China, they're probably not on his side now, but they will be on his side. I had dreams of Russia and Iran and China back in Christmas time, 2016. We we're told multiple times in scripture that Babylon will burn with fire from alliance of nations from the north. For I will stir up and bring against Babylon an alliance of great nations from the land of the north. They will take up their positions against her, and from the north she will be captured. Their arrows will be like skilled warriors who do not return empty-handed. So Babylonia will be plundered. All who plunder her will have their fill, declares the Lord. 
I can see that all the schools being operated by Russians. They was being operated by foreign soldiers. And I said, are you an American soldier? And he said, no, we are Russian soldiers and we're here to take over America. It was a dream they had of a Russia attacking the United States. I was working on the computer and then all of a sudden, one of the sites that I was on, it had breaking news. Russia attacks and then everything in the house goes black. Everybody was watching the news, everybody was in shock, everybody had fear in their eyes because North Korea had made a thermal nuclear war declaration against Britain and the United States. In front of the house, all of a sudden, we will go inside and we look out the window and there's tanks rumbling down in front of our house. And so then a tank pulls into our driveway and in the window I could see who was in the tank and it was Putin. So. Okay. There will be a part two. Please don't miss it. Thank you for your patience. This is a big topic. I know it sounds impossible, but it's not meant to instill fear. It is meant to make us ready. It is meant to get us in a place of understanding what's coming so that when it comes, we're not one of these that it describes as being filled with panic and terror. We'll be like, okay, he told us this. We're ready for you, Lord. I'm ready to do whatever it takes. I mean, even Matthew 24, Jesus said clearly, there will be wars and rumors of wars before I come. Why do we think that we're so great that we won't be involved in that? Why? Because we're arrogant, because we're full of pride. And the and pride comes before the fall. This is made with so much love, you have no idea. <sighs> Thanks for watching. God bless, and I love you guys.